Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is High Jump Studios. Today, we're going to be playing some war game Red Dragon, as you do when you wish to play a video game. Specifically campaign, and uh, I'm going to do a... I, I don't know how long this series is going to be. Essentially, I'm going to be playing all of the campaigns, um, slamming my head into a brick wall until I beat every single one of them, from Busan Pocket to Second Korean War, uh, several of which I've never beaten before, South Korea's Busan Pocket being the only one which I've ever properly completed. And, uh, yeah, we're just gonna see how this goes. I'm not gonna talk over the intro. June 10th, 1987. South Korean dictator Chung Do Wan, having reached the end of his official presidential mandate and willing to step down, announces his choice for a successor. This appointment, which oversteps any electoral process, triggers the wrath of the students and the liberals, who were hoping for democratic reforms. June 10th to the 18th, 1987. In a matter of days, over a million protesters take to the streets all over the country. U.S. forces in Korea are ordered to remain on lockdown in their barracks. North Korea does not fail to notice the situation in the South. Agents infiltrate designated circles in order to increase the level of chaos, while military forces are put on alert. June 19, 1987. While police and security forces are about to be overwhelmed, President Chun mobilizes the army in the streets. Hard-pressed and panicked by a hostile crowd, an officer orders his troops to fire. In a matter of minutes, the shooting spreads all over the streets of Seoul. June 19th to the 21st, 1987. The crackdown is brutal, resulting in over a thousand casualties and many more arrests. June 21st, 1987. With U.S. troops still confined to their barracks and the ROK army deployed in the streets, North Korean leader Kim Il-sung decides the time has come for Korea's reunification. June 22, 1987. When the North Korean artillery barrage rolls over the DMZ at dawn, U.S. and ROK units, disorganized by the civil unrest, are taken by complete surprise. June 22 to the 27th, 1987. Within a few hours, the first lines of defense are overwhelmed. Within a few days, the battered U.S. and ROK units are pushed back to a last perimeter around the vital harbor of Busan. Yep, you heard it correctly, folks. The year is 1987. The animatronics are getting nibbly, the Koreans are getting testy, and I wasn't born yet. Major, I'm sorry, but I cannot get through to the general headquarters. He's going to get a connection patched through. He's going to talk with a sergeant, because I guess everybody else is dead. And they're not taking prisoners, which is bad. And they're going to talk about basic unit composition, communication breakdown. Essentially, if you jumped into these campaigns after getting off the heels of uh, the War Game Airland Battle campaigns, which uh, I did, um, this is an entirely new experience. They got, like, more than just a wall of text at the beginning of the missions to explain, like, why all the units are bashing their heads against one another. He's contacted American headquarters. He's getting information on their objectives. In the meantime, here's the situation. Basan must not fall before American reinforcements arrive. Sounds simple enough. Which is three days' time, according to their promise. Okay. Holding three peripheral sectors. You can see them on the map before this pop-up showed up. And the enemy is surrounding us. If they reach Basan, um, he doesn't tell you this, but we're going to have to use what's left of the ROK reserve. And if we, if like these guys get into the Basan sector, I can't R&R &R or uh, refit any of these units. So I'm going to do a breakdown of what I have available to me. In the north, the 25th Infantry Regiment, with no initiative and very low cohesion. They have Yebigun, which are militia, Songshu, which are uh, in the 1985 equipment pattern. They have M60s, M272A4 law rocket launchers for taking out tanks, and the venerable and uh, 
pretty neat looking K2 assault rifle. Hyosam Stingers, which are for destroying helicopters and low-flying jets that get a little bit too in their britches. And Hiska Hwagiban, which are anti-tank guys. And they have recoilless rifles, which are really good at taking down uh, the light armor which we're going to be facing. As well as the Susek Day Recon. Their helmet looks kind of funky. I'm not going to comment on that. I'm going to assume that it's supposed to be like camouflage or something. What they're riding around in are these... KM900s. Um, if memory serves, they are Italian export armored cars. They have no armor and are only armed with an M2 Browning. Yes, that one from World War II. This gun will never die. There's eight cargo trucks, four um, command, uh, you know, armored car things, and these engineers. Bonbu, which is their... Uh, in their uh, command vehicle, which are also in a KM900, going boom for taking down those pesky, pesky infantry that we'll be facing. Kuryong, which I will be using to their fullest extent, and these KM132s, which have napalm. Facing them are going to be the 27th fire support with Shilkas, uh, mortar tanks, and ZSUs. An anti-tank company with Susong Po arms, uh, Type 63s, and the ATS-103, which I think is actually going to keep heading south. The 52nd Infantry, which is armed with six UAZs. Gonna mean that I'm going to have to do a lot of CV hunting if I get around to it. Uh, 16 Zil cargo trucks. Strela 2s riding around in the anti-air missile arm version of the uh, VTT-323, which has got the designation of Hwasung Chong. As far as I know, uh, most of the North Korean units are based off of what the North Koreans showed us in parades at the time when this game came out, and even today. So whether this vehicle would actually be used in this capacity in real life in a real war... I don't know, but it's here. They are surprisingly dangerous to helicopters and, of course, low-flying planes that get a little too testy. Bantank faggots armed with a faggot M. Uh, there's 12 of those guys. And 40 Pachongsu. They are 10-point units. They have a strength of 10. They have light machine guns, RPGs, and assault rifles. If you let them gang up on you, they will melt you in half doesn't matter that their training is regular, there's a ton of them. And of course, these Jongchalede, which are recon infantry, and have elite training, which still doesn't mean much because they're North Korean. Supporting them is, uh, well actually, you know, these Tokchons are gonna be... No... I don't know where these things are going, I think they're... They might be going farther south. Anyways, down here, which is a battle that will be happening soon, there are these... 100 point Koskins, eight of them. If I can get eyes on these things, I can win this battle very easily just by destroying their artillery support and forcing them back. Um, these tanks, which are T 55 recons, which have good optics, I don't know what makes them recon specifically. Maybe they gave the tank commander some binoculars. I don't know. And uh, these Type 63 amphibious tanks, which might present an issue. They're only 25 points. They have no armor. I can deal with them. Defending against that are M36 Wolverines from World War II and K113 Toes, which are Jeeps with tow missiles, as well as this armored regiment with Jiwi Cha tanks, K511s, M48 A5Ks, eight K1s, and a Fiat 6616. Wait a second. Hold on a second. Which? Okay, never mind. This is the right one. So, M48 A5Ks, M48 A3Ks, and not four command tanks, only one. I must have moused over, yeah, I moused over this one with 16 of those tanks and about 8 K1s and these recons. Anyways, sorry for that confusion. 
Um, we have another infantry battalion with four more Strela armed infantry units, Bibang Chung Po, which are just okay, and by just okay I mean they are terrible anti-tank troops, Bachang Su, as with up in Daegu, and the... <laughs> come on, let me see it, and more Jung Tue De. I'm butchering that, I know. Uh, in here I have more K1s to send, I'm going to send them here. Uh, they'll be able to help immensely with all of this. These SU-25s are going to go down into Yongdyok, as is this tank regiment. That's their direction they always go. I'm going to send these extra recon assets up here, as well as these SEALs. It's going to go, hey, I'm here, I'm a SEAL team. And uh, I'm going to send these fighters, these guys, and these guys over there. This I'm going to hold in reserve. I don't know the thing. In regards to these forces, I have strike squads, which are F5As, which are CF5s, if you know the jet. It's a terrible jet. Probably never should have entered service. But they are armed with napalm. They are 10 points. I don't really think they're worth it. I've never really had an opportunity to use them. As well as the strike squads, which are F4D piece pheasants, which have amazing cluster bombs. I've destroyed a lot of stuff, but they are 120 point jets, and I just won't have the extra leeway and points to deploy them if I'm doing it wrong or right. I have anti-air I can pull out with stingers, eyehawks, and uh, basically the Korean version of the uh, Vulcan arm. Yeah, the M168 Vulcan. You can get these in the American deck too. Uh, artillery. I've never really had a good opportunity to use these things, ever. Anti-tank, which is a lie. It is neither anti nor tank. And the best thing you have in this outfit is these tow missiles. But even then, like, just pray you don't have to pull these out. But these attack helicopters I will be deploying. Because they're going to be super useful over here. Because I'm going to do some of that CV hunting, like I talked about and logistics. I'm going to hold these other 10 points in reserve. I'm not going to spend them. And we're going to end the turn. The jets are going to return. The infantry units are going to come in. And this battle is going to be auto-started because they are on the offensive. And I'm going to do some shooty bang bang stuff. It's going to be great. As I said, strike squad, I forgot to mention, but these are F5s with napalm. I'm not super worried about them. They're just MiG-17s. Or MiG-15s, whatever. They're the super old ones. The really old ones. The ones that you can just kind of shoot down. Anyway, my plan is as such. We're going to go to support. We're going to pull out two of these 70-point core Jungs. And uh, I'll show you what those are going to be used for in a second. Then we're going to need uh, two Yebigun at each bridge. Uh, or not the Yebigun, the Songshu. We're going to need Iska in these areas right here. Um, that should be enough. We're going to get a Bonbu over here. We're going to move this Jiwi Cha over there. And we're going to get out... Oof, 360 points left. We'll see where we end up. I'm going to need... Yebigun over here, here, and here. I'm going to need... My Reki to deploy here. And this K1 right here to head across the bridge and immediately start doing fire support things. Mm, I might be forgetting something. I feel like I am. Uh, huh. Yeah, I, I'm probably forgetting something. What do we have in the vehicle? Oh, yeah, these KM-132s. Uh, 
I'm gonna try not to use those too much because I'm not sure how useful they'll be. And we're gonna go with another one of these because I want the points, but at the soonest sign of trouble, we're gonna evac it. It'll be great. Um, I can't pull in another tank, but I can pull in more infantry, specifically two more Song Shu, which I will be doing here. All the rest of this looks like it's as squared away as it's gonna be. I'm gonna launch the battle. I'm gonna set it to bullet time. I'm gonna have these guys unload. These guys are gonna fire over here. And these guys are gonna fire over here. And now we see my master plan. These guys are gonna move here. These guys are gonna move here. Actually, we can probably have them move in a little deeper. Just because I'm not fighting a war, really, so much as I am a delaying action. My objective is not to destroy the enemy's entire assault, but merely to defend and try and save what I can. Get these Yebigun in here. And these guys are going to move over here. I'm going to need this Suseik Day to unload. And this K1 to get moved. And now, back to normal time. This K1 is going to be an invaluable asset. These guys are already across the bridge. We're going to have them unload, and we're going to move them back. And watch the fireworks. Boom, already destroyed a command.
And I won. Nice quick fight. 1360 points. Only 170 in losses. But stuff I can't really replace. Not the greatest. But the Strela 2 units are dead. They will not be coming back. Neither will these um, Iglo armed uh, APCs. These Shilkas didn't manage to take down all of them. Could have gone better. It's all right. These ZSUs, completely destroyed. We'll never see them again. And they lost an F5. All in all, really great. You can see how like completely neutered these units are. Like, they only have 20 infantry left. Every single one of these things that gets destroyed is like an infantry unit that they lose, even if they didn't lose that infantry unit. That's why I was trying to save those uh, K200s. Or the these KM900s, rather. Uh, meaning, I can move these guys wherever I need to, really. But, I'm going to reinforce these areas with my excellent... Well, they're not excellent, really, but they are jets, and I need them. And I'm going to hold these forces in reserve. I don't need to pull any of them out yet, which is great. Um, last couple of times I did this, when I was a younger, less skilled man of action and mystery, uh, I would, did terribly. Like, the 25th didn't exist by the end of the first battle. Um, these engineers were, like, trying to pull anti-tank duty, which they cannot do. But I'm going to keep trying to use these Koryungs for everything I can. So, uh, we're going to keep them around. Uh, when these engineers show up with their, uh, <laughs> 8 BM-21s and TO-55s, they are going to be in for a world of hurt. Because I'm going to just shell them. What are they going to do? Stop me? That's what I thought. Anyways, we're going to go to Yuichang next. And this is going to be the fight. It's a weird shaped map. It's got a big river. The It may not seem like it given the situation they've stuck us in. But the game designers of our, are actually being really nice. Because every avenue of attack that the enemy has to take from Namang has to be over a bridge. It just... That's... That's what it has to do. And bridges, while not necessarily cover... I would prefer that there was a big wall here that they had to funnel all their troops through. But I don't. Rivers aren't cover. But uh, it could be way worse. I'm going to move it to Daegu. It doesn't give me income. But it is a closer deployment point, And I can deploy on this side of the river. And they can move to reinforce Jiochang, which I might lose my grip on. In tanks, I have these M48 horses, which are pretty modernized. They're, they don't have a stabilizer. And unstabilized tanks have to be parked to shoot. That's just... Well, yeah, well they have a 5% stabilizer. Either way, they're going to have to be parked to shoot, which means that uh, their usefulness is going to be dubious at best, but... It's what it is. Anyways, infantry. These guys are actually in K200s, uh, which are more akin to infantry fighting vehicles than those piddly little wheeled APCs. But I still don't have a lot of them, and I don't know how well they're going to do. But I'm going to have them deploy here, and I'm going to have them rush over to occupy these sets of buildings and farmland and uh, try and blunt the enemy assault that's going to come across there. In regards to the tanks, I'm going to do a tank here and a tank here. And uh, in the recon, I'm going to have a OH-6 support them, as well as more infantry here, here, some Yiska, here and I'm gonna try and use these buildings for cover. Get um, another two toes and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with those guys pretty soon. But they're gonna need a infantry or a uh I'm gonna 
deploy back here and I'm going to move it forward because I'm afraid it might get shot down. These guys do have those Iglo armed APCs, as we know. Um, one, two in this hunter killer group. One, two, three. One, two over here. And one, two. Well, one, two. So, need to make sure that these guys are going to be flying when they spawn. So, we're going to deploy them right there. And we're going to not have any jets to begin with, which could be dangerous. But we're going to do our best, and we're not going to be able to hold these. So, we're going to unload this guy. We're going to get these guys moving over here. We're going to hold these dudes in reserve, as well as these and we're going to get this OH-6, which was not flying, apparently. Okay. We're gonna get it and we're going to get these guys unloaded. And now that we have our income, we are going to go back to normal speed. As you can see, big enemy group here. And that's just like what we can see so far. Hold these dudes where they are. Now we can see a lot more. Those VTTs are going to head over in this direction. They're going to try and cross the bridge here or here. Um, these guys are going to be in for a world of when I get my... We're going to get these dudes unloaded. Just go over here and we're going to get this it's back. And the party is starting. those into target. We're gonna go ahead and preemptively pull out all four of our trucks because that's all we have. These things, gonna have to take them out. These are the ones armed with Iglis. Um, these guys are covered. They are. than ideal here. Assault. Those things might try to cross the river.
your load and get out. These things I need to land over here. And then I'm gonna need a thanks. Installed them on that side of the river. Perfect. Jets on station. And this guy is out of tow missiles. He is no longer of use. He has to. Check and make sure that none of my jets are wandering around doing nothing. Get these guys back in the fight. I kind of didn't mean to waste them like this, but I know that I need to class Just 30 
25 more points. Ah, there they are. Just gotta take these bad boys down. And I'm gonna do this all cinematic like. Get these things. I didn't manage to destroy any of them. There you go. And destroyed the entire infantry battalion. Very cool, very good. Didn't take out as many Koskins as I wanted to, but this was a bloody, bloody fight. On my end, it doesn't look super bad, especially points-wise, but I had less than them to start with. Anyway, uh, I do believe I'm going to leave it here for now. So, thank you for watching. I'm going to go see if my recording studio equipment recorded it correctly.